Yo, I have a GoPro. Um, I got it as a Valentine's Day present for my wife. It's very thoughtful. Um, this is my first time using it. Hopefully this comes out reasonably okay. Um, the sound was pretty bad in my last video. We'll see how the sound is on this thing. Anyway, um, we are standing in my office. It is time for a shop update. Um, I haven't been recording a lot of videos. I've been prioritizing actually getting the work done rather than making the videos. We have a baby coming in a few weeks, so I kind of want to get uh, sort of a final push of stuff done here before baby comes because that'll knock out the next couple of months. But one of the big updates is I have this office. Um, this has been really useful to have. Nice closed in space that I can keep animals out of and can keep dust out of. It's still an absolute mess. I still have a lot of things to sort out, but it looks pretty good. Uh, the wall, um, that's just two by six framing, but on the outside here, um, we have hardy backer. I've used aluminium sort of uh, three quarter by three quarter angle channel along here. I think that's really pretty. Um, we're gonna have a, a theme, an aesthetic theme in this shop of these grays. I've also got the hardy backer going along the base run around the shop. Uh, with some aluminium trim at the bottom. The idea here is this stuff is durable to water and splashes and oil and it'll get messy and a little weather over time. Um, but uh, it'll be pretty hardy, hence the name Hardy Backer, I guess. Well, well I think it's named after James Hardy, but whatever. Um, more aluminium angle here, aluminium plate here that covers the electrical um, channel. Uh, one of the challenges I'm facing is a lot of these electrical boxes got moved when we installed the foam. The foam just pushed them out of position. So I'm gonna have to make custom cover plates for all of these. That's going to be fun. Um, so that's good. That's a lot of work that's happened. Um, some other stuff that has happened is, I think in the last video, you saw that I was working on the plumbing for the bathroom. Um, you saw me make a sink for the bathroom. The bathroom is now done. There is the sink, toilet, shower, super useful to have these. I have the washing machine installed, but not the dryer. Hey, kitty. Um, to install the dryer, I need to move the vent from the back of the dryer to the side of the dryer. That's another side project I've got to get done to get the bathroom finished. <coughs> but there's a bunch of things I want to do to get this place up to code. Um, probably the next thing that I want to do, which isn't actually a code requirement, but is just a usability requirement, is you can see I've got the first of a couple of shipments of uh, birch-faced plywood here. Um, that's going up on the walls horizontally. You can see over here I've already started mounting things on the wall. Um, I'm going to have to take that off, put the plywood up. Once the plywood's up there, it'll give me a great surface for attaching a lot of storage so that we don't have junk all over the floor, which we do right now, but... Um, That'll get better once I've got some walls up and have some storage space. Uh, the next major wall I need to do is up there. We need to have a rail uh, projecting that balcony space. Um, that's required for code. Also need handrails uh, for the stairs. Uh, need lights over the stairs with a three-way switch. Um, anyway, there's a bunch of stuff to do. Um, I will try to film some of it. Again, as I said, filming hasn't been my priority. Uh, but maybe I'll film installing some of this plywood so you can see that exciting process. Uh, on the topic of filming, I noticed that last episode I uploaded was episode 18, and I missed uploading episode 17. Uh, episode 17 was the installation of the lights. I'd borrowed the uh, Skylift thing uh, from the people who were installing the spray foam and used that to install the lights. So yes, I do have lights in here. I have nine of these high bay lights. I think they're 150 watts actual each, I think. Um, but anyway, it's super bright in here. They're just two rows, um, each individually switched. I don't have one in that back corner there because of the um, garage door open up, but against the wall, you can't see them right now. I have these LED strip lights, which provides light over there. They're the same lights that I used in here. I have a bunch of them in here because I really wanted this space to be super bright when you're working with small parts. Um, it's helpful to have a lot of light, so I'm really happy with that. I've also done some electrical, so they're switched. Um, I'm getting my servers, they're on their own circuit. I've got another circuit for the hydronic system. Um, the electrical's gotten a lot messier um, than when I started. I probably should have planned out these runs a lot better because I'm trying to avoid uh, 
drilling through too many of these posts, a lot of the wires run that way under the stairs, around and back, um, which is a circuitous route, but it means uh, fewer uh, penetrations through structural posts. Anyway, um, that is what's going on. I might insert some footage of the installation of the lights. As I said, um, I had that footage, but I only kept, for some reason, a time-lapse version rather than the full version with my lovely narration, but I might insert that here. And then we might look at me installing some plywood. All right, that's the quick update on the shop. Um, progress, it's good. The battery died and the time lapse stopped, but it turns out you know, it didn't miss much. I just got this first uh, panel up here. I thought it would be a simple matter of cut, install, cut, install, bang, 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 all the way down the line. Um, I remember when I was getting this building framed out by the, the pole barn builders, I was being really finicky with them about the spacing of the girts and making sure that everything was lined up, and I was saying, look, we really want to hold a one-eighth tolerance and they did not like me. They say that's not how bowl barns are built. And I think what I really should have done is have them just build their building the way they wanted to build it. Then I could come through and frame everything on top of their framing the way it needed it to be because uh, this is going to be a, a bit of a bit more of a painful job than um, I was hoping for. Because uh, when you come and look really close, this is nominally a four foot spacing. So you should be able to stick up a, a sheet of plywood here but when I installed the next sheet up here, which I've since pulled down, um, I realized it wasn't that easy. We've got these two boards have managed to, they just nailed together and they've pulled apart. I'm not sure how they pulled apart because you'd think the foam would push down rather than pull up. Maybe the boards cupped and twisted a bit. You can see light from the outside <laughs> in between these two boards, which uh, I'm not even sure how that happens given that there's sheathing running on the outside. Um, but this is a mess. We've got like a, a, a one inch gap up here, which means I'm not sure how I'm gonna fit a four foot sheet here. I'm gonna have to do lots of cutting and trimming. Um, and I may have to install more girts and more backer pieces to get the boards up, which is frustrating. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Uh, what I decided to do is I just decided to, I needed to pick a single sort of point of reference, a point of truth. Um, this, when we uh, laid out uh, this hardy board, I had the neighbours help me and they had a laser level that projected a straight line and so they leveled the top and so I used that top as a reference 
you probably saw me in the time lapse, I made a wooden block to space uh, this next guy up here. Then I just measured everything off here. Um, I would have driven myself crazy, uh, I think, trying to do it the way I was originally trying to do it, which was splitting a lot of differences. Um, I wanted to make sure there was enough room uh, for that top board that's going to go along that way to hit the right girth there. Also, I didn't want to have to do a notch out for each window, but I'm going to have to do that. Um, you can see sort of the variation in this shop as we go from one end to the other. If you look at um, where I started up here, that's almost, that's just touching There's the bottom girt there. And it's maybe a half inch below there, an inch below there. Almost completely an inch and a half the width of a two by six uh, off there. And it starts coming back up here. So there's sort of like a weird bow to the building. Um, look, you know, I can't blame them. They uh, laid out all of these girts. Uh, before there was a, a slab here and we know the slab's not even flat because uh, the bottom of the hardy backer that's why we have that aluminium trim at the bottom there is we use that as I said that top as, as the reference line against the level and there's some bows and dips in, in the slab as well but anyway um, I'm not too worried about it all once the boards come up they'll cover um, the visual effect of the, the, the girts and, and, and everything will look level. I think I am working myself up over nothing. So these ones are up. Um, I'm not going to do that corner yet because I've got to do some more electrical work there. I think what I might do is work on this back wall here next. Uh, you don't need to see that. It's going to be much the same. In fact, this back wall should be a lot easier because um, I'm not having to cut sheets. It's all just going to be the full 8x4 boards. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, I like the, the colours. I wasn't sure how the palette would work between the hardy at the bottom, the two different grades of aluminium, and the birch, but it's nice. Um, I wish I could go all the way up to the top. I think that would just be too much work and really expensive. Um, but I think even the yellow of the spray foam up at high is, is going to look okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to call this an update. Uh, this is episode, I guess, 19 of the shop build. Um, hopefully by episode 20, I'll be working on the stairs up there. Uh, sorry, the upstairs area. But we're getting close to getting this ready for final inspection. So thanks for sticking along. This has been a long journey. And um, I'm going to get it done. See ya. G'day. Uh, Josh Brown here, and in today's exciting episode, you know what, I can't really pull off a New Zealand accent. I just thought it was funny that uh, Scott Brown uh, did a series recently. If you don't subscribe to Scott Brown's YouTube, you totally should. But anyway, he did a series of tips on um, uh, plywooding a garage, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. Anyway, I wanted to give you a quick update um, on the video that you just saw. I uh, ended up doing that wall over there. It looks great. Um, and my quick tip, um, which shouldn't be surprising, is don't get hung up on level. If it looks straight, it is straight. Um, what I did with this wall was I started with using my spacer block down here to lay out that top piece of aluminium there then put the plywood pieces on top. But then I realized that the plywood pieces, um, you can't see it from a distance, but there was little seams appearing at the bottom but not the top, which made me realize that uh, things weren't level there. So I decided to give up on using my spacer block and just kind of freeformed it, where I put the metal in place roughly with just two screws, put the plywood sheets in, got those butt joints as tight as possible, um, and then screwed in the metal. And you know what? It looks really good from here. I could not tell you that it's not straight, but if you measure the width of that aluminium channel, it varies by like up to an inch and a half over the course of the roughly 60, uh, 40 feet that we have here. Sorry, I can't remember the size of my own shop. But after finishing that um, and sort of 
coming to terms with it not all being technically level, but actually having it look good, I decided to redo the back wall. You'll remember on the back wall, I also had this sort of inch and a half variation at the top, which while it was technically level, none of these windows are actually placed perfectly level and in line with each other. The, 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 the frames, sort of the wood around them, uh, were not all perfectly lined up. And then the windows themselves sort of shift up and down a little bit inside the, the frames. So that would have meant that, you know, with the way I'd set it out yesterday, all the plywood would have been technically level, but the next run would sort of have to have jogs and cutouts for, for the windows, which would have just looked horrible. So what I've ended up doing is moving all the plywood sheets up by making this aluminium rail at the top here that runs all the way down there. That again is not actually straight, but at each window, it's aligned flush with the top of where the window actually is. And then I've just pushed the plywood up against it. Um, and then I'll be able to do the next run on the top up there above that. That means I have to redo all the metal down here and move it up to sort of match that gap. But just, it, it looks a lot better. It's not straight, but it looks good. And that um, makes me happy. So that's my quick addendum to the video uh, so far. All right, I'm not gonna keep on videoing. Um, this work is pretty um, mind numbing. Well, not mind numbing, it's just not exciting to watch. It's exciting to do. Um, I'm just gonna be putting up bits of metal and putting up more bits of plywood. But that is my update. What say you, Kitty? You liking the space? That was a yes. All right, catch you all next time. Bye.